This is the Ned Minnow from Bugs Fishing, one sixth ounce, or was that a one sixth or one sixteenth? Hmm. It says one sixth right here, but I could have swore it was a one sixteenth. Either way, it's got a, it's a new color, definitely the one that I was wanting to use whenever I visited Heath's shop in Magnolia, and I cannot wait for him to release this once he uh, gets them sorted out from his shop. I know this guy is gonna make a lot of y'all happy whenever you start tearing into flounder and speckled trout, redfish. I mean, it's gonna catch just about everything that we got out here. I've had really good success with this thing. So check that out right there. Just basically, you scooch it across the bottom, soft mud, anywhere near that waster, and this rabbit fur comes to life just like all of Heath's lures. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to here, let's put this kayak on autopilot. So, uh, one of the things I wanted to let y'all know before we actually get started was the Houston Fishing Show. It's getting ready to kick off on uh, March 25th and 26th. I'm definitely going to be there at the George R. Brown representing Bugs Fishing and Old 18 Outfitters. On Friday the 25th, I'll be at Old 18's booth, and then Saturday the 26th, I'll be over at the Bugs Fishing booth. So I'd really love to meet each and every one of y'all that helped to support the channel and uh, shake your hand, tell you thank you for everything that y'all have done for me. And uh, it should be a great time, so. That's three for three, man. We gotta hurry up and get to a point where there isn't going to be so much oyster. But right here, I mean, there's tons of it. Y'all can see it right up ahead. Didn't really come into this one with a plan per se. Just wanted to see if fish were going to be starting to come back into the, uh, the marsh. See if they're, what their activity level is. And... Well, hopefully we're going to have somewhat, some activity. The waters are very low, so that should, you know, push them into the main bayou. I'm hoping to be able to see something, maybe even catch something in the main portion of the bayou right next to all this oyster. Oyster Alley. Let's see what we can pull out over here. Usually it's good for reds, speckled trout, and flounder. Sheep's head, if the stuff is covered, sometimes whenever they're active, you can take advantage of some of those guys. Black drum as well. But I want to see, uh-oh, 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 nothing but oyster that we was bouncing on. Again, got to stay away from that stuff, Mark. Dude. Yeah, that's a bite. He's got it. Uh, should be a flounder. That's what it felt like to me. The bait went up in the air right there by him. Yeah, it's a flounder. All right, let's see if we can catch anybody a little bit bigger. That's not a bad start though. Look at that. It's a pretty little fish. It's worthy of a photo, I'd say. All right, buddy. You're gonna have to let that lure go. Hook's no longer in your mouth, but please let my lure, dude, let my lure go, thank you. Oh, there's the bite. Oh, just missed him. Okay, we're gonna spot lock right here. Let's see if we can get the guy to, to bite again. Okay, buddy. There he is. 
I don't know what he's doing though. He's like hit, hit, and then he lets it go. Yeah, he just hit it twice and let it go again. Oh, here he goes. Got you. That's a red. Engage the drag. Going towards the oyster. No, <laughs> it's a black drum. Son, what are you doing biting this? I told you, this lure right here and the area that we're fishing is good for the big three and then all like the bee squad as well. Black drum, sheep's head. My gosh, this dude is just fighting. Okay, come on, come over here. There you go. Right there, that's a keeper. I don't feel like eating black drum though. That's a good picture too. Okay. I'm gonna thank you for being such a great sport, buddy. There we are. Nice black drum, y'all. It's a gorgeous fish. I thought it was gonna be a red. Multi-species day, it's what it's shaping up to be. I think he's got it. Does he got it? Yeah, he's got it. Speckled trout. There we go. Now that's worthy of the dinner plate right there, y'all. I know this fella's gonna be a keeper. 16 incher right there. Buddy, we're gonna get you set up to go home. Yes. Right there, that's what we can look forward to. Come on, chill out. Oh man. Fifteen. Okay, close your mouth. Close your mouth. Close your mouth. Close your mouth. Thank you. Fifteen and a half. That right there is what we were looking for. I started wondering about the black drum and just thinking to myself, man, you really messed up an opportunity to take home dinner. Okay. right there I'm hoping to track down the flounder that I just saw go chase some bait up to the surface and bust it up on those fellas oh there's the thump got you Look at what we got here to complete our slam. 19 inch redfish. I'm in. You poked me with my own hook, dude. That's a uh, shame on you.
There he, he's got it. He's got it. I can only assume that this little rat right here, we'll see you later, homie. Um, that little rat is what's making the bait go crazy right up in front of us. Ooh, what a day. Killer combination, old 18 Outfitters, Buoyancy, the brand new rod lineup that they have come out for 2022. It's the finesse style rod, seven foot long, 12 titanium guides, carbon fiber handle. These guys are gonna be linked in my video description down below, check them out. And if you wanna save on a gorgeous rod like this, 20% off if you use the code MDLR20. Hopefully, these guys are going to be ready and they're going to have some for show at the fishing show. That way, y'all can get a closer look. You can put your hands on and just see what it's all about. I'm loving it so far. Great. I can feel everything off the bottom. And they're going to just everything being handmade here in Texas, American-made. And uh, it's, it's a gorgeous rod. Oh, he's got it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, and it's a flounder too. Dude, I was completely taken by surprise. Wasn't expecting this guy to do that to me. Boy, this lure is on fire, y'all. It is, it's getting the bite. My gosh, this is a killer combination right here. Bugs fishing lures, the Ned Minnow. Oh, that is a heavy one, bro. This is heavy. Oh my gosh, look at this. I was like, what is that? Talk about a crazy hook set. Let it go, dude. That hook, like seriously. Well, in case any of y'all were wondering about setting the hook with an ultralight powered rod or much less like a light powered rod, this right here is proof enough. I mean, look at that. Let me get a photo of that right there. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot believe that. Oh my gosh. There we go. All right, well, we'll let a black drum come and feast off of that right there. There, there. I've got my eye all the way back over there in that portion of the bayou as well. It's usually good for a trout or two, but I'm not seeing any blow ups. Every time I, uh oh. There we are. About a 13 incher. Turned out to be an amazing day of catching. Not 13, that's for sure. Let it go. Dude, let it go. Okay. Well, uh, 10 inches somewhere around there but hey buddy don't do that that's hitting below the belt dude you can splash in my face it's a great day of catching and the marsh is gonna be on fire here really soon the bigger fellas will start uh, I mean they may already be in here they're probably in the back lake crushing mullet but it's definitely gonna come to life. Oh man, just picked it up on the run. That's a redfish. You gotta love the aggressiveness on these fellas. Man, do they just fight so dang hard. It's crazy. All right. 
Not bad. Just an uh, all around great day of fishing. Early spring. That's what it feels like. I don't even know when winter ends and spring begins, but I mean, I'm telling you, it, today is gorgeous. It feels the part of springtime. We're gonna do something a little bit different because I saw this inside the grocery store and it's the Bella Sun Lucci or Lucy brand sun-dried tomato with a little bit of a smoky, I think, yeah, smoky chipotle. And uh, I think that's gonna pair really well. What we're gonna do is some linguine. It's been a little while since we've done this right here. And uh, the way we're gonna prepare the speckled trout is the uh, Zatarain's blackened seasoning. So let's get started. Well, speckled trout are one of the easiest fellas to fillet whenever it comes to their meat and like backbones and everything else. You just go straight through that rib bone and then go along the backbone. We'll do the same thing on this side. A good fillet knife that's sharp will work wonders whenever you're doing this job right here. And there we are, just like that. Go ahead and discard this, and there we go. Two gorgeous looking fillets. Let's get the rib bones out, clean our knife. Okay, so here we are. Get that belly meat off. I don't really care too much for it. It actually just uh, looks offsetting to me. So we'll get rid of all of that. There are pin bones in this, but I think I've already removed them with the, uh, the rib bone and the belly meat. So we're good there. And now let's repeat over here on this side. We've also got some garlic to help out to flavor this that we got right here. I want some fresh garlic and fresh uh, onion flavor by way of these shallots so let's get the cook's knife so here we go just gonna mince these up i'm not one for onions i can't stand raw or anything like that from these fellas and the uh the best way to get the onion flavor minus the texture of it is to mince them that's why y'all always see me uh, mincing these guys take our garlic and then just uh, cut away this little portion of it right there. And I'm gonna rough chop these fellas. Um, actually, I think I'm just gonna kinda mince them as well. I, I don't wanna bite into a big old clove. There we are. Some sticky stuff, man. And we take our fillets and uh, we season them up. <laughs> Speed racer. I mean, we're like pretty. Fast we're pretty much ready to go. Like everything is all prepped yeah. and, and good to go. So I think half of the pack should be good enough for us. Right there. that down. Start a timer for about eight minutes. It's approximately two tablespoons of butter. Get this guy melted down, mixed in with our olive oil. The butter is the real deal. Don't use the fake stuff. Make sure you're getting like 100% real butter, not like a butter-like spread or anything like that. This is what's gonna make the sauteing process and the fish taste really good. Skin side down. 
I love that sound of the sizzle. Mm, that is a work of art. All right, it's time to flip. Get that butter back on the bottom of the pan before we flip. Oh man, that looks so good. That right there is our timer for the pasta. We're good to go. This is gonna cook for about another like 45 seconds or so. Actually, we'll put this over here because I'll still need it to put inside the pan. And our fish should almost be done. I actually want, want that other side to cook a little bit longer, the thick side over here. Oh, it's flaking apart. It's time to remove. Okay. Yeah, that fish was starting to flake apart. We're gonna put another tablespoon of olive oil right there. We get our shallots in here. Get our garlic. Soften these up just a little bit. It's our first time trying this one, so we'll let y'all know if it's gonna be good or not. I mean, it's, it's it, it, it looks really good. Well, the garlic is very aromatic, and so is the, uh, the what do you call it? The shallots. I'm gonna put a little bit more oil in here, y'all, because I don't think that's gonna be enough. Olive oil's pretty good, though, so. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just trying to rehydrate this uh, sun-dried tomato spread. And we'll get this. Can, is uh, the pan still in the shot? Or can you not see it? I can't see it because you're blocking it with your phone. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. I'll uh, get this out of the way. Can you no, see it now? See it. Yeah. Okay. Well, it coated it really well. I can, the aroma from the tomatoes are really pouring through now. And there we are, we're done. Let's plate this stuff. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Is that there? There. Okay, and there you are. I am not waiting for a picture, y'all. Let's see how this bad boy tastes. Blackened seasoning, I mean, I already know it's gonna taste good. At least the speckled trout will be phenomenal, no doubt in my mind, because the blackened, I, this is the blackening, or blackening, the blackened seasoning that I prefer the most, and it's, yep. Every bit as good as I remember. <laughs> it's so good, delicious. Very hungry. Me too. Oh yeah, I ate the fish by itself. You can definitely taste the salt and the uh, black and seed. The black and seed, yeah, it's very, very high in sodium. It's almost like a really dry, thick spaghetti sauce, but it's got a lot of spice from the chipotle. Yeah. Holy it's moly. It's got like a tomato paste texture almost. Well, yeah. Well, the texture, yes, because it was very dry. It's like, it absorbed every bit of olive oil that we had. And I even put more. I'm glad you added the, on, the shallots and the garlic though, because I don't think it would have had much no, flavor. No, yeah, it, all it, it's just got a very smoky chipotle, and I think that was it, but the garlic helps it out. And, it's good. It's oh, I mean, bland. yeah, I like it's it. It's bland, like without the other stuff. Yeah, it was very uh, dry. It needed something. You gotta figure out how to rehydrate it. Maybe a little bit of water. Something. 
I don't, could you use some kind of cream in it or would that oh, be yeah. disgusting? Like maybe no, like that a, would have been a nice cream. A heavy whipping cream yeah. or something. So that's where my reservations are as well with like trying to rehydrate it. I think half and half. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want a heavy whip. Oh, Mexican cream. Mm -hmm. That, that work. would work perfect with it. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. On the 25th and 6th of this month, we're going to be at the Houston Fishing Show. And I look forward to meeting each and every one of y'all that support the channel. If you're gonna be there, stop by the Old 18 Outfitters booth on the 25th, that's where I'm gonna be. And then Saturday the 26th, I'll be over at the Bugs Fishing booth. And all I really wanna do is just be able to shake your hand, talk fishing, say hi, get to meet the audience who helps to support the channel. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, that's gonna do it. Until next time, tight lines, everyone. We just